All right. <laughs> Q&A. Finally doing it. I've been talking about doing another Q&A, honestly, for like a year. <laughs> I've been saying it's going to come out for a few months, but I am finally doing it. It's, it's happening. It's happening. So much has changed. I think the last one I did was three years ago, maybe longer, maybe almost four years ago. It's been a while. A lot of things have changed. Uh, <laughs> uh, doing this kind of content, so it's so different. So I'll try to make this as good as possible. You guys sent in a whole lot of questions. So I will try to do as many as possible here. I, I also eventually want to react to the old q and I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think it'd be a little emotional too. Just different, different place in life. A lot, of, a lot has changed. Uh, so it might be a future video. We'll see. Try and take YouTube a little bit more seriously. Honestly, YouTube really confuses me. I don't, I don't get it. The non-live content is so different than live content, but I am trying to get a lot better at it. So we'll see, uh, you know, maybe my post uh, finally on the IRL channel. We'll see, we'll see. But diving right into the questions, there are a lot. So I'll try to um, organize them, make them flow as well as I can here. I'm sorry if I'm just so awkward on pre-recorded stuff. <laughs> I know we talk about this all the time on on stream and, and whatnot. It's just, it's it's very different. It is very different. All right. Do you remember chatters names? I do. I, if, especially if someone is chatting a lot or they have been in the community for a long time, I do remember a good amount of the community members' names, especially if they're chatting, showing up all the time. I do remember, do remember them. Dream country to move to if you had to leave the U.S.? also talked about this on stream a lot. I really don't know. I always say I would love to just live in like a little beach bungalow. I don't know <laughs> where I'd choose. I, I do love Italy. I've been there a few times and it's always been amazing. So we'll go with Italy for now. If you had to pick, who would be your favorite Disney character? Hmm. Growing up, I always loved Jasmine. I think she's still my favorite. I had so many Jasmine dolls. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Jasmine. If someone challenges you to a content creator clash boxing match, would you accept even if it's for charity? Honestly, like I, I think I would. Um, I would be so nervous about getting hit in the face or breaking my nose or anything like that. I think the training arc would be a lot of fun and challenging. I think I would do it. Just, re just release all the, the gaming rage. It probably would actually would be really good for me. Do you still have something from your childhood that is sentimental to you? Um, not, not really, to be honest. I don't really have a lot of items from my childhood. I don't have a lot of memories from my childhood either. I think I might have some like little figurines still that I've held on to. I usually just have drawers and drawers of things I don't want to throw away. Kind of like <laughs> that I should throw away. Even just like birthday cards or like boxes. The things have come in and I just never throw them away. Um, but sentimental items from my childhood, I really, I really don't think so. I don't, I don't think I've held on to anything, which is kind of sad. But <laughs> yeah, uh, just going back to the, I don't really have a lot of memories from my childhood. So there is that. If you could go back and change your career path, would you? Mm, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I changed what I wanted to do so many times. I never thought I would be a content creator slash streamer. That was, wasn't really a career path. That wasn't really something that you wanted to be. Like when I was in college, that wasn't a career. That wasn't, wasn't an option. I was already working in corporate America when I learned what Twitch was back in 2015. And I was just like, okay, okay, yeah, I could, uh, I could do this. I could do this. And that was like seven years ago. <laughs> Um, so I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I'm glad that I went to college. I worked so many jobs before streaming. I don't think it would have turned out as well if I didn't have all the experience that I did going into streaming. Also, my allergies are really bad, so I'm so sorry if I'm sniffling into the mic. I'm just, I'm in shambles with it. What made you go into being a content creator? I just really knew that I, I wasn't happy working at my job. I was an underwriter at Blue Cross. I did that for two years, staring at numbers and medical records. Just not fun, not what I wanted to do. 
with my life and I, I knew that basically from day one like this is this this sucks I don't know what I want to do like I have my degree in marketing I want to do something creative just using that 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 talent that I have I love just working in creative spaces and I I never considered content creation I never really considered it influencer esque it wasn't really a thing either when I first started streaming I just was like ah, I'm streaming I'm a streamer but yeah, I just really, I, I knew that I didn't want to work in a cubicle for the rest of my life and that I was going to do whatever I needed to do to not be stuck there. And yeah, I've been full-time streaming for like five years. So it's been a path. It's been a path. What was the biggest mistake in your streaming career and what would you change if you had the chance to change it? Oh, I have a few. I have a few. Um, one of the biggest I would say is not doing YouTube right away or just not taking YouTube seriously and not taking content outside of Twitch seriously for a really long time. Just that was a big mistake, but also getting, what's the word, like complacent, getting too comfortable and forgetting all the things that I was doing when I was growing, kind of just letting myself settle. I don't, I don't even know um, the best way to put it, but with all that has happened in the last years too, and like the two times that I had to like mentally step away from streaming, which was probably like a good and bad thing. Like the first one happened like right when I was at the peak of like my Apex career. And that like always haunts me that I just like let the internet get to me and stepped away. And that just was was not was not great. And that's just how streaming and content creation is. You can't really can't really take those breaks. <laughs> you lose all your momentum. And I just I let that happen twice. And I wish I could go back and change that and handle that a lot differently. But also I don't know. I don't know the the right way to put it. Like I think I also just didn't think I could grow anymore. I was I've always been like scared of like <laughs> the potential. So I don't know. I, I kind of like I kind of lost my what's the right word to, to, to say like not drive, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I settled in way too much and I would definitely go back and change all those things and keep going after it, like going after the growth. How do you see yourself in the industry and community as one of the biggest female streamers? I really have always struggled with like seeing myself as a, a big streamer in my mind sometimes i'm still just the the, the small streamer i was when i started out I, I, it's still kind of surreal to me um i'm like super thankful that i've been able to get where i am and be such a like a leading female figure in the industry i just it just makes me happy that i was able to, to claim like one of the top spots it's really difficult to get up there i don't know if this sounds like weird but sometimes i forget how big i am I don't know. I, I just like I lose sight of what I've accomplished. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, y'all can tell I'm like really great with words here, but I don't know. I don't know. I, I still see myself as small sometimes, and I need to remember that I've, I am, I am a, like a a, a, big, a big streamer, and I need to be like uh, just I am happy about it, but like I need to like use that more like mentally. Does that make sense? I am so bad about talking about some things. Um, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Honestly, like this is like so much easier with chat. I wish I had chat talking to me right now. I feel like I'm actually talking to myself. Have you ever felt like you just wanted to quit Twitch? Sometimes. I definitely, there's definitely have been times where like the internet can, the internet can be just a cruel, cruel place. And live streaming can be really difficult as well because you're not able to you know, curate it to exactly the perfect video. You take out all the mistakes and bad angles and you're not having to react to live comments, which was the hardest thing to really learn. Uh, but there's definitely been times where I just really didn't want to be on a live camera anymore. It can be very draining and people can just be really mean. <laughs> And I've let I've let the mean people get to me too many times, but I'd still I'd still love what I do, and I'll have those moments, and then I I hit the next stream, and I I see the support from the community, and I'm just happy to happy to be doing it again. I really I really have learned to like this last year. Not a lot of things phase me anymore. <laughs> I really just like I've seen everything, I've heard everything. Just nothing shocks me. Doing pretty good nowadays. What content would you stream to improve your streamer role? Well, the variety's been really good. The variety's been what I wanted to to do to like improve my streamer role. I wanted to become more of a 
all-encompassing content creator. I, I knew that being just an Apex content creator wasn't the move in the long run. I, I, I saw the signs kind of thing. And I, I made the switch at a good time, at a good time. So the variety was always something I wanted to do to improve my content, improve, improve as a streamer. And I still want to do a lot more IRL. I've been loving the variety. Yeah, no, the variety has been good. What do you like to do after a long stream? Usually I just want to sit in complete silence and just become one with my couch. And the last thing I want to do after streams is, is talk more. I just like to decompress, sometimes have a glass of wine, just throw on a show. And um, I play Disney Dreamlight Valley off stream. That's kind of my relaxing, turn my brain off kind of nighttime routine. But usually after I finish stream, just relax for like a little bit eat dinner and then I go to sleep and I wake up and rinse and repeat but really just logging off of everything I used to like in stream and instantly just be back on twitch and looking at all the social medias I've gotten too much of where like I don't want to look at them anymore I don't want to be on twitch when I'm not on twitch like when I'm not streaming but I don't know I've, I've been doing that too much after a while you just it's oh it's like logging logging on to your work software after your work what was the most memorable comment chat made mm, i don't think there's like one that i can really think of but the comments where people tell me that you know i've been watching your streams and been going through like a hard time and they've really helped me get through that or just the the, the messages about how i've inspired them and the like I, I don't know if it's i'm always just like me like i i did that like oh like i i never thought like <laughs> I, I don't know, I'd be inspiring people in that way. I don't know why, it just it still shocks me every time I see those messages. Um, but it just makes me so happy and it makes me like just really glad that I do what I do. And that those, those messages are the ones that like really, they really motivate me and they, they, really, they really keep me going as well. What was the hardest part leaving an org and why did you leave? I, the hardest part was telling them that I was leaving. <laughs> I don't even like correct wrong food orders. I don't ever want to deliver bad news. I don't even like going up to the counter and asking like for more ketchup, like I'm very non-confrontational. Pulling the trigger on that and telling them like, hey, like I'm not resigning. It's just time for me to go separate ways. And the biggest reason why I left NRG, I this is I started really struggling with Apex. I, I really just I didn't I didn't want that to be my sole content. I didn't want to just be stuck in always being a content creator. And I felt that I couldn't do that while staying on energy as one of their apex content creators that I would still be seen as an apex streamer and I wouldn't be able to break free from that. So leaving NRG and leaving the apex content creator team and everything, that was the biggest step for me to go into variety. And I'm really glad I did it. I, I did. I loved my time on energy, but it was just, it was just time I was on an org for three years, which is a pretty long time to be on an org. Yeah, yeah, I just, I needed to start the new chapter of my career and get into variety. What is your favorite hobby other than streaming and or gaming? How often is this a part of your routine? I don't really have a lot of hobbies, to be honest. I, I like to read. I don't really have a whole lot of time to read. So I listen to audiobooks while I'm getting ready or I'm driving because it's kind of the only time that I'm, I have. I really don't have any hobbies. That kind of sounds sad. There's just not a lot of time unless like gaming, like, like playing games is my biggest hobby. I would say it just happens to also be what I do <laughs> for a living and, and part of my career. So it's really hard to like have a hobby and have time for it if you're not making content out of it as well, which kind of sucks. But yeah, gaming is like my biggest. And I, I guess like second would be reading. Yeah, I just, I just don't really have a lot of time. Or I guess binge watching TV shows. I'm really good at that and I do enjoy that. But yeah, it's also really hard for me to stick with hobbies. I'll like find a new hobby, do it for a week, and then don't do it anymore. And then I find a new one a month later. <laughs> but yeah, honestly, like gaming, gaming would be my biggest hobby. How long do you see yourself streaming for? What are your plans for if you retire? I really, I really don't know. To be honest, I, I was talking about this um, with chat the other day. I don't know. I don't know. Content's always shifting. It's always changing. I know I don't want to live stream forever i think there'll come a time where i don't want to be on live camera <laughs> anymore but i i always like want to do content so i see myself always doing content and i i just don't know what it's going to look like if that's going to be i'll do 
short form or I'll just do like pre-recorded. I don't know. I, I, I don't have any plans to, to retire from streaming anytime soon. I love it. It's still going great. The industry has been in some really weird spots. I know Twitch is in some tough spots as well. So I don't know. It's, it's really hard to predict what streaming and content creation is going to look like in a year or in a two year, just like how much and how quickly it changes. But I'll be, I'll be around for quite a while longer. Who, what got you into gaming? I started when I was really young, really, really young. I remember I probably was in third grade and I was watching um, Parents were at like a family gathering. One of the older kids was playing Kingdom Hearts. Whole time we were, I was there and just like, oh, this is, this is sick. This is like a book. Like, isn't this like a story? And I was really like into books as well. And then gaming was also like a book that you could participate in. That's how I first saw it. And I remember the first like other game that I came across was, was Duck Hunt. Then one of our older cousins gave us a, a 64 and we had Golden Eye, Medal of Honor. I'm like, this is cool. This is cool. And then what, like, I guess like, what really got me into gaming was like, I, I started playing SOCOM in middle school, probably like, way too young to be playing SOCOM. I was like 10, 11 years old, 10, 11, 12, playing SOCOM <laughs> online. So that was like my first online shooter. And that's what really got me into the competitive online shooter gaming scene. And I, I just fell in love with it even more from there. So I've been, I've, been, I've always kind of always been into gaming. It's always part of my childhood, part of college, like high school, college, post college. Like I've always, it's always, always loved it. Always loved it. If you were not streaming, what career do you think you would be doing instead? Well, I went to college for marketing. I have my bachelor's in marketing. And before I started streaming and was like, okay, this could be a path, I already knew that I wanted to leave Blue Cross. Like I didn't enjoy that. I could see myself doing event planning or some kind of ad PR or just working in like, ad agency, the staying with a creative field. I think event, I think I would really like event, event planning, but I never never got to explore the marketing world post college because I started I started streaming. But I definitely would be doing something with my with my degree, social media marketing. That wasn't even an option. Like <laughs> really like there wasn't that wasn't a, a field when I when I graduated. But if it was I probably would have pursued that. Do you feel streaming has added to your anxiety with being more of a public figure in the gaming community? No, definitely. Definitely. I'm a highly anxious person. I deal with a lot of anxiety. If you, if you watch my live stream and I'm always like biting, like my lips or like the inside of my cheeks or anything, I'm having a high, a high anxiety day. So I, I, do, I do struggle with anxiety and, and streaming definitely does not help it at all whatsoever. Um... <laughs> gotten good at managing it there's still some days where it's overcome with anxiety on stream and it's like it's like all right i gotta go like i gotta end stream i just i feel weirded out for some reason just out of nowhere and there's anxiety that comes from being a streamer doing live content that you always need to be live you can't take any extra days off you can't take vacations you can't be gone for too long which like unfortunately is true like you really can't take extended time off it really makes you lose momentum so which is why burnout is just so bad in the industry as well. So it really, it really doesn't add or doesn't help the anxiety. But also being a public figure and being on camera all the time, I also get super anxious about how I look, how I sound, how I'm presenting myself, how many pimples I have or how my hair is looking. Like just like a lot, a lot of it's appearance wise. Yeah, like I don't enjoy that. Again, the internet can be just so ruthless. Oh my gosh. When I first started streaming, that was that was the hardest part was getting like my appearance picked apart and having to read so many comments about myself from people that don't know me, but some that don't even watch me. That that was the hardest. That does give me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> I don't read comments anymore. <laughs> I should, I should, but it's really difficult to to be honest. It's it's pretty tough. Pancakes, waffles, or French toast is a very important question. I would definitely have to put French toast last i'm sorry i just I, I don't dislike french toast it's good but it goes in third pancakes i do like especially if they're like buttermilk fluffy pancakes but i really like waffles i like waffles they got little they got little butter holders and little little pockets for the syrup so it doesn't go everywhere you know it's just it's more enjoyable to eat i'm gonna have to go with waffles does twitch streaming ever cause you depression or stress <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah have you been in like my community for a while like you know like i had like two mental breakdowns um, in my streaming career. 
where the stress and like I, I already struggle with depression and streaming doesn't help that at all. But there is, yeah, there is like two times where it just got really overwhelming and it doesn't help, I would say. No, it, it doesn't help at all. In my seven years of streaming, I've learned to like protect my peace and set boundaries and kind of, again, like I, I don't obsess over comments anymore. I really had to like let a lot of things just roll off of me and learn how to let things roll off of me. But it definitely doesn't help, especially if I'm having a bad day. It's hard to hide that on stream. It's hard to just turn the camera on and smile and like pretend like you're you're great when the last thing you want to do is be on be on camera. I still have a, like a lot of good days and a, some bad days, less bad days now. But streaming, yeah, streaming. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But oh, the character development you get from it, it's great. When will you vlog? Soon. <laughs> I I still need to see if I have enough footage from Japan to put a vlog together. But like this is like so like vlogging and like this like the Q and A. This kind of content is so different. It's so different, and I get super anxious doing it. And I feel like I need to like look at myself in the monitor and looking at the camera is kind of like making eye contact, and eye contact makes me really uncomfortable. But I already hate making eye contact, even just like in real life. So looking at a camera like this is tough. But I I do want to vlog. Like I do want to vlog, and I want to do uh, like m other kind of content. Like, I don't know if more influency content's not, that's not the right word. Like IRL, yeah, the, the like TikTok and vlogs and non-gaming stuff. I really want to do it. And we, I had this discussion on stream the other day, but I am the only reason why I haven't done it. Like I definitely have just been, I've self-sabotaged so much, but like, I just assume that I'm going to be really bad at it and then I'm going to fail at it. So then I don't even try to do it. I feel like no one's going to like, like it and I don't know what to do and I'm going to be too awkward, which sometimes, I, yeah, I got to get over the awkwardness. And I was like, what do I talk about? I don't have chat to talk with, like to vlog. I don't do anything interesting. It is something that I really want to do. And I just think I need to have a little bit more faith in myself. I want to do it. I have the freaking IRL channel and I've just, I've talked about it for years. And like, I'm going to vlog, I'm going to vlog. And I never vlog because I just get in my own head about it. So I'm still working on that. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Would you in the future join another org? Yeah, that's definitely been something I've been thinking about. It would have to be the perfect fit. Orgs really aren't in the greatest spot right now. Like the gaming in industry has been struggling post COVID. A lot of orgs and just companies within the gaming space really got ahead of themselves during COVID with COVID numbers since everyone's at home watching. It would, it would have to just be a really good situation in an org for me to join it would have to benefit me as much as it would the org it would have to be an org that wanted to support my content and helping me do other kind of content so i don't know i don't know what the that'll look like i've had some talks i've, I've had some discussions we'll see <laughs> we'll see i i still have some things in the works so favorite anime besides naruto that's a good question that's a good question I probably would say Akami Ga Kill just because that was one of the first ones I watched that wasn't a feel good anime. <laughs> oh, and that just left me absolutely devastated. I do really like it. I think it's I think it's really good. So my name on Overwatch was Akame for a really long time. So I'm gonna have to go with that one. What are some of the most memorable experiences you've had over your career so far? Definitely joining NRG was up there, joining an org. Filming a commercial for Pringles was insane. Absolutely insane. I would I would totally do that again. <laughs> I was so nervous. Oh my God, I was so, I just was like, just so awkward. I was struggling so much, but it was a really good experience and I loved it. And I would do it again. Um, having my throwdowns, reaching a million followers, being nominated at the Streamer Awards, all that. Just, there's, there's honestly so many, but the, I would say those are the top. Are you the oldest or youngest child in your family? I'm the middle child, actually. I'm the forgotten middle child, the overlooked one. Like my, I have an older sister who were 14 months apart and then my younger brother is two years younger than me. So I'm the middle and my siblings look a lot more alike. Similarly, they look alike. I don't look like them as much. Um, middle child things, but yeah, middle child. Any new and exciting projects coming up? Yes. Yes. I, I've had some things in the works. I have, I can't really, I can't say anything yet. Um, my merch is coming soon. So I'm finally getting merch out. 
again, oh my goodness, I know I've been talking about it for so long. I don't know why I struggle so much to get big things done. I think it's because I'm just scared everything's going to fail. So then I put it off and I procrastinate. And that's a deeper conversation for another time. Um, But the merch is coming. I have some events this year, a potential, I can't spoil anything yet. Um, But I do have some really exciting things in the books for this year. I'll just go with that. Besides the basic jobs that we all wanted as kids, what was one specific job that you wanted to work when you were younger? I really wanted to be like an FBI agent or like a CIA, like a spy. (laughs) I actually went into college as a international relations and political science major because I really, really wanted to work for the FBI or something. I don't really, I don't know if I really like actually thought that through. Like I applied for the FBI um, like internship and scholarships and stuff. Didn't get it, but (laughs) then I switched my major like a semester later, but yeah, I really wanted to be a spy, which I would have done absolutely terrible at. Oh my gosh. I can't even make phone calls. Like, what was I thinking? What oh, would have been the worst spy ever? What do you love about living in Texas and specifically Austin? Honestly, the only reason I live in Texas was because I was born and raised here. My family's all still here. My family didn't live here. I probably would not live here. Austin, I mean, I've lived in so many major cities here. I lived in, I grew up in Houston. I lived in Dallas post-college. Went to college in Abilene, unfortunately. I dr- I've drove, I've driven. Words are hard. I've been all over Texas. <laughs> Austin is really just my favorite that I've that I've been to. So I, I picked Austin and it had good internet except where I live right now. What do you like to do on your days off to relax? I only have like one day off. I, I take Thursdays and Sundays off of streaming, but Thursdays I have all my meetings, all my appointments, and I clean on Thursdays and record if I need to. Sundays are like my one true off day, but then I also am like cleaning and doing laundry and then I'll relax for like a few hours. So I don't really have like true days off where I'm doing absolutely nothing at all. Like no chores, laundry, nothing. When I do get time, sometimes I like to play The Sims. I like to just sit on my couch and do nothing. This is probably like why like I just like literally don't leave my house very often. I'm already like a very low energy person. So by the time my off day does roll around, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to leave my house. I don't want to go out. I don't want to talk to people because I just like talk all all the time so yeah i mean that kind of sounds sad but (laughs) i just sit on my couch i mean cleaning is kind of relaxing sometimes but yeah every now and then i'll take an occasional bubble bath too and have some wine that's that's nice that's nice as well i i probably need to relax a lot more do you have any advice on how to handle sexism toxicity as a female gamer i find it really difficult to navigate sometimes it it is it is hard to navigate it's never gonna go away and that's not like really the answer that people want oh those people will always be on the internet and especially in this in this space you're gonna face a lot of toxicity and a lot of sexism but if you let it affect you then they win and i used to let it affect me a whole lot nowadays yeah i just i let just about everything just roll off of me i've seen it all i've heard it all i'm very desensitized to everything do you really just like you can't let it stop you. And I know that's, that's so much easier said than done. It is, but it's never going to go away. And you could be the most perfect person. You could be just an absolute angel, like wouldn't hurt a fly kind of person. Someone on the internet is still going to like write mean comments about you. They're still going to find something about you that they just hate. They can't stand about you. So it's even if you're the perfect person, you'd still get the toxicity. So the only thing you can do is is keep trucking along on your path and if you stop or you let it affect you then then they win so and you just can't let them have that satisfaction i i know that's like not the greatest answer like that people want to hear but it's just you just you just gotta let it roll off you it you just you can stand up for yourself i think it's always great to stand up for yourself you can stand up to the trolls and then just move on because a lot of times they're they're really just looking for attention what are you hoping to achieve in the next year? Well, this year, I, I really want to focus on YouTube. I really want to take YouTube more seriously. I want to take non-gaming content more seriously. I would love to finally hit a million subscribers on YouTube. I just like let my YouTube channel kind of, <laughs> I neglected it for a really long time, especially like when I stopped playing Apex as much. I just didn't know what to do with it. So I really want to take just other kinds of content more seriously. I want to do a lot of more IRL stuff. I would love to just like do it all. And that 
was going to be very hard to do. But and like I want to do like TikTok more seriously. I want to do like non-gaming TikTok. Like I don't want to just like post gaming clips. But I struggle with knowing what kind of content like my audience, my viewers already that I like that I have already like want to see. And so if you have any ideas of things you want to see me do, put them in the comments down below because I need some ideas. <laughs> I need some inspiration to tell myself that I can do it and that people want to see me do other stuff besides gaming which I always will game. I love gaming, but I want to do more. I'm hoping to finally like do it and get comfortable with it. So that's really like what I want to achieve this year is finally breaking out of my comfort zone. What is the hardest thing you've had to deal with as a streamer? And is there anything you miss from not being in the public eye? I, I The hardest thing I've had to deal with as a streamer would definitely just being picked apart and everything you say is judged, everything, all your actions, your reactions, everything are on display especially with it being live and that everyone's able to post their opinion about you so sometimes I miss like not being in the public eye and miss like not being so worried and self-conscious about how I look and caring so much about it like I've always, I always cared about, like how I looked but when I like started streaming, I never was self-conscious about my voice ever, but especially when I was blowing up and at my peak on Apex and I had a lot of viewers, I, I just got so many comments about how annoying my voice was, how nasally it was. I have bad allergies. Okay. I can't help it. Um, but that, that really got to me because I just was like, okay, like I never was self-conscious of my voice now, but now I am. And like that sucks. So you get a lot of insecurities that you didn't have before so i miss like not having to hear people's opinions about every single thing i do if that makes sense <laughs> but it's a part of the job and you know i love what i do so it it's unfortunately like that's a part of being in the public eye public's eye public eyes words are hard how do you deal with creeps hitting on you constantly as a female streamer you watched my streams you know i <laughs> I just flame a lot of them. Chat always knows when I'm I'm reading one of like those comments when I'm like just looking at the screen like oh okay yeah usually I just like flame them a little bit in chat. I I think it's funny, especially the first time chatters. I love that Twitch made that update now that you can see like oh first time chatter. This is their first ever message in the chat. It's like are you single? It's like bro, like I'm I'm playing. A game right now that's what you're concerned about like is my answer going to be whether or not you stay because that's pretty weird but yeah i just think it's funny i really just think it's funny yeah it doesn't like affect me negatively i would say or positively <laughs> oh i just get a good chuckle out of the creeps and i'd go about my day that's pretty much all you could do why do you answer haters to be honest, I don't answer uh, like all of them or a lot of them, but every now and then someone just like says something and I just, I need to call them out. And I think more people need to be called out about their nonsense, their, their BS. I think a lot of people are just very used to saying things and getting like, kind of like, they still get away with it, but like, they're not, they're not like embarrassed and they should be like publicly embarrassed about it. But there, there's a difference with like giving them the reaction that, and like calling out the behavior. So I see nothing wrong with the calling out the behavior of a lot of people. I think it needs to be done. And I think more bad behavior needs to be called out in the gaming industry in the space. Because I think a lot of people just, they just ignore it. And people are like, oh, that's okay to act like that. I definitely used to react to the haters a lot more and pop off on them as in like, argue with them on twitter i yeah i can't be bothered with that anymore well sometimes they gotta be sometimes they just gotta be put in their place how many hours do you have in apex i actually just calculated all that and i'm missing a few accounts that i played on but with the three accounts that were my main i have like 6300 it was like 6325 or something like that so uh quite a bit quite a bit uh too much to be honest and people wonder why I don't play the game as much anymore. Like, bro, I've played for like 200 days of my life. I just, I've had my fill. I've, I've had my fill. Do you have any phobias? Um, I'm absolutely terrified of things that fly and sting. Bees, wasps, yellow jackets, hornets. I have an insane radar. Insane radar. Like, I can spot one a mile away kind of thing. I just, I panic. I freak out. Like, I have a panic attack if I see, even like, poor, poor little bees. Poor little bees freak me out. 
I think it's because one, I watched Killer Bees when I was really young, like way too young. And that movie kind of scarred me for life. So I think watching Killer Bees definitely did it. But I also got chased by a wasp when I was young. That's like one of my one few childhood memories is I remember getting chased around my backyard by a wasp. So that definitely did it. But that's really like the only thing that like really freaks me out. I guess I don't like super tight spaces, but I wouldn't say I'm like claustrophobic. I don't think anyone really likes really tight spaces and besides those like splunkers, those cavers that are <laughs> those videos. Oh my God, that, that, that watching that gives me anxiety. What's your daily routine, r- daily routine like? Um, when I'm actually on a daily routine, I'm actually <laughs> functioning on my daily routine. Um, wake up, hopefully around like 7.30, work out, come home, make breakfast, get ready to stream, stream, in stream. I should, I, what I should add in there is after stream, I should go over content. I need to get better at that. So in stream, in the future, go over content, find clips, interact on social media. That's like future routine. Um, eat dinner, go to sleep, rinse and repeat pretty much every single day. And then, yeah, Thursdays, pretty much the same except all my meetings, appointments, recordings, cleaning, and then Sundays, cleaning, some relaxing. But the, that's basically my daily routine. I really am not lying when I say I don't do much besides make content because, like, unfortunately, to kind of be successful, you got to make it a your entire life. And you have to make social media your entire life. And I hate social media so much. And it's bad. I like really, I've stopped posting on Twitter and Instagram and I need to do it again because it's not great for my career to not be active. But it's just, it, it, I, it's so hard for me to want to interact on social media. I, 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 need to, I need to get better at it. That's another goal for, for this year is to post more on Instagram, take more pictures. I just hate taking pictures. It's on the list of things to do. What is one thing you can't live without in your life? Fuzzy socks. I love socks. I'll, t- I'll take socks as gifts. I won't even be mad. I'm always wearing socks. I'm just pretty much 24-7. I sleep in socks. Which it's not, there's, there's nothing wrong with sleeping in socks. It's actually supposed to like help your circulation and you know help you fall asleep, blah, blah, blah. But I love, I love socks. I don't think I could live without my fuzzy socks because my feet are always cold. So <laughs> I'm going to say my fuzzy socks. What is your MBTI type? I haven't taken that test for a while, but I'm an ISTJ, the logician. Personality type with the introverted, observant, thinking, and judging traits. Would you ever want to be in a game like voice actor or something? Yeah, I think that would be really, really cool. Voice acting is something that I've, I've thought about as a like post-streaming career or something that I want to get into when I'm not doing live streaming anymore. Uh, I don't know what that'll look like or how to even begin that journey. But yeah, I think that would be really, really cool. I've had people tell me that they think I would make a good voice actress or doing stuff like that. So yeah, definitely. And I'm definitely interested in something that I might look up pursuing whenever I decide to not live stream anymore. Have you ever considered starting a podcast? Yeah, I was actually um, just talking about this um on stream but yeah it's definitely another kind of content that i would be interested in trying out seeing how it would go again like i don't know where to start with that i don't really know what i did what what i would talk about the the just i've been doing a lot of just chatting streams recently and they've been doing so so well and it's been super easy to talk with chat but if i don't have chat to talk to i don't really know what i would say but yeah yeah i would definitely be interested in, in doing a podcast again if you have any uh if you have any ideas for that things that you would like to see me talk about definitely put them in the comments down below doing doing this kind of content even like this q a video i can tell that like i'm really nervous and like a little awkward with it but I, I do want to do like more content like this. I want to get more comfortable with it, get, you know, improve the setup, improve the background, all that fun stuff. I just like, I don't know. I, I don't know what the, like the community wants to see or just like, I just need to get more confidence about it, I guess. But yeah, I, I feel like if I, if I had certain topics in, like I found someone that I really vibed with, I would, I would do a podcast. I also like everyone and their mother has a, has a podcast. So I think that's a lot of like where the confidence thing comes from. Like, what do I have that they don't? Like, there's already too many, which is another part of my self-sabotaging that, that I'm trying to work on, that I'm trying to get over. Oh my goodness. The last question was, can we see Presley? So come here. Hello, baby. I don't know if she'll get up here. 
There we go. Flip around. There's enough room, baby. Okay. <laughs> There's Presley. Presley, why do you look so awkward? You're just as awkward as I am on camera. Oh. You're just like your mama full of anxiety as well. Honestly, like she she really is the perfect the perfect fit for me. Oh my goodness, we are we are too alike, Press. We're too alike. I know. Oh. Move your butt. You can do it. Presley, come here. Okay. All right, so I guess this is how I will be finishing the video. Um, Presley really wants to be in this. So, yeah, I guess that's the updated Q&A. I do want to post a video of me reacting to the old Q&A. I think it'll be, it'll be a little emotional. So I have that on the list of things to do. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really want to do more videos like this. And also, if you have any content requests or just things that you would like to see me do, whether that's on TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, collabs that you would like to see, just whatever content that you guys want to see, put it in the comments down below. I, I'm always just searching for the new ideas and it helps me be confident that you guys want to see other kind of content and helps me be motivated and confident to do other kind of content. So whatever you guys want to see, put it down below. But yeah, hopefully I won't take three years to do another Q&A. Hopefully I can do these yearly i think that's the plan that's the new plan but i hope you guys enjoyed like comment subscribe you know all the youtube stuff but yeah i think that's it right presley you have anything you just want a a treat or a, a cookie yes if you guys watch stream you know how crazy she goes for them but again thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate it and i will see you guys in the next video Bye.